Welcome to the latest video in the Autopilot How-To Series. In this video, we're going to talk about Pano Mode. Pano Mode builds on target by capturing a series of photos that can be stitched together into a panorama. I'm going to take you through the new panorama functionality, both as a standalone mode, as well as as a waypoint action in a waypoint mission. The goal of this video is to show you how to use Autopilot to take the pictures necessary to create the panorama. I'm not going to talk about how to stitch the images or how to host it. However, for those that are interested, I am in the process of putting together face-to-face -to -face workshops, both private and group, that will teach you how to use Autopilot and all the functionality that it provides. If you are interested, please reach out to us at training at autoflightlogic.com. There are three primary use cases for creating panorama pictures in Autopilot. The first, where you select a location on a map and have the quadcopter fly to that location and do a panorama. Second, where you fly to an individual location manually and let the Autopilot software do the panorama there. Or third, using waypoint mode to fly to more than one location and then do a panorama at the selected waypoints. Within Autopilot, there are three types of panoramas that you can easily do and then further customize into a custom setting. First, a vertical pano where Autopilot takes three to five pictures only while tilting the gimbal to create a long vertical shot. Second, a horizontal, or sometimes called a cylindrical pano, where the quad takes pictures in each direction without tilting the gimbal at all. You can do this in a full circle, 360 degrees, or half a circle, 180 degrees. Finally, a spherical pano, where the quad takes pictures in each direction as well as while tilting the gimbal. These type of panoramas can now be hosted on sites like Facebook and DJI SkyPixel, amongst many others. Overall, the power of Autopilot is in its flexibility. I believe that once you understand how Autopilot works, all the modes tend to make sense and work well together. We are always looking for ways to improve the user experience, but our goal has been to focus on meeting the wide range of needs and requirements. For background on the use of Pano, I recommend watching the Waypoint videos, including the third Waypoint video where I introduced Waypoint actions, as well as the Target video since Panorama mode works very, very similar to Target. Before we do a live example, let me quickly show you the user interface for Pano and the options that are available particularly in Intermediate and Advanced. Let's start by opening Autopilot and going into Pano Mode. We'll start in Intermediate Level. To start, as I just mentioned, Pano Mode is very, very similar to Target. However, instead of having a tripod in the sky that you can easily move around, Pano Mode allows you to drop a camera that will do an aerial Pano wherever you want. Most of the things that I'm talking about will be equally applicable when using Pano as a waypoint action under a waypoint mission, and I'll demonstrate that soon. Looking in the center of the screen, you can see the altitude, which is the height at which the Pano will be taken. The preferred closing speed is applicable in Pano mode, and it's the speed that the quad will fly to the location that you've selected. Photo mode allows you to take not only single shots, but HDR or AEB shots. It's my experience that the AEB, and in particular the HDR shots, take a long time and are only needed in rare cases, but the option is there for you if you need it. The aspect ratio allows you to take pictures at either 4.3 or 16.9. I usually leave it at 4.3. This is mostly here just to make sure that the camera is returned to 4.3 if it was previously set to 16.9 as 4.3 is the most common use case. The profile is the key setting that lets you select what type of pano to do. There are default pano settings which include horizontal 180, horizontal 360, vertical, spherical 180, spherical 360, and custom. We at Autopilot want to give our users the flexibility to take as many pictures or as few pictures to create the shot that you want, particularly based upon the variables such as the altitude of the aircraft or the lens in use. We have configured the default settings based upon our key beta testers requirements. You are welcome to use those default control values or modify them based upon your own needs and results. We're going to start in Spherical 360 and we're going to go to Advanced so you can see all the settings that drive the number of pictures that Autopilot will take. Before I go through the settings, let's look at Frames. 
This will show the number of rows and the number of pictures in each row it will take. If you're using exposure bands, which I'll explain briefly in a minute, it will also tell you what exposure setting will be used at each picture. With the current defaults, you can see that Autopilot will take 37 pictures across five rows, four of eight pictures, and the final row of five pictures. At this depth, it will take approximately five minutes to shoot. If you want to modify the number of rows and pictures that Autopilot will take, you'll want to modify the control values. Let's start with the vertical start. Vertical start is the initial angle that the gimbal is tilted. Zero degrees is straight forward, and minus 90 degrees is straight down. The default value is 20 degrees, which is pointed slightly up. If you find that this results in some shots resulting with the propeller in the shot, you can modify the vertical start at a lower angle. Column width is the number of degrees, horizontally, that you intend to use for each image during post-processing. By default, column width is set to 45 degrees. At this setting, it will take eight pictures in each row. If you increase column width to 60 degrees, it will switch to six photos in each row. You may need to adjust column width to take more pictures if you're using a camera with your Inspire that has a smaller field of view. Finally, row height is the pitch angle difference Autopilot will tilt from row to row. At a higher degree, like 45 degrees, Autopilot will take less pictures. At a lower degree, Autopilot will take more pictures. One final thing. There is one very cool thing that was added under Advanced Settings, Exposure Bands. Our advanced beta users notice that sometimes you want to change the exposure settings when pointing the camera at the sun versus pointing the camera straight down. Exposure bands allow you to define different bands and have Autopilot automatically adjust the exposure plus or minus. For more information on how to use this, check out Flight School. One final comment. If you have customized your Pano flight settings, I recommend saving them as a flight plan. You can then load that flight plan anytime you're doing a pano and move that location and altitude to exactly where you want. Let's shoot some panos. I'm going to start with the use case of wanting to shoot a pano at a specific geographic location. I'm going to open pano mode to start, and now I'm going to confirm the settings that I want for the panorama. I'm going to set the altitude to 165 feet. Photo mode is single, aspect is 4.3. Now I'm going to set the profile to spherical 360. I can click on frames to confirm the number of pictures that it's taking and the number of rows. I can now tap on map in the lower center of the screen, expand the map out a little bit, and figure out where I want my panel to be taken. And then I can tap and hold there, and it's going to ask me where I want the panel mark to be. At this point, I'm going to turn the quadcopter on. I'm going to assume that I've already done my compass calibration, and I'm going to enter the flight dashboard. While I could engage the quadcopter from the ground, I tend to prefer to take off, get to a safe distance, and then engage from the air. So I'm going to take off and go fly out to uh, the middle of the lake here a little bit. I'm then going to tap on Start Engage Sequence, Checklist Complete, and then I'm going to do fixed operator and takeoff location. I'm going to confirm the altitude and hit continue and it will count down. It will then fly to the location that I set on the map and begin doing my panorama. You then can watch it frame and capture each of the, in this case, 37 shots. And I'm going to speed this up a great deal so you don't have to watch it shot by shot. Once it's completed its last shot, you'll see Capture Complete in the bottom center of the screen, and then you can decide what to do next. In this case, we're going to want to go fly someplace manually and take a panorama at the location that we've flown to. To take control of the quadcopter to fly to the alternate location, there are two things that you can do. The first thing you can do is to initiate an RC override. Depending upon the quadcopter you're flying, if you're using a Phantom 3, this would mean flipping it from F back to P. If you're using a Phantom 4, it would mean switching it from P to either S or A. You may want to check Flight School or your quadcopter to find out what you need to do to take it out of uh, autonomous mode.
At this point, you can fly to the alternate location, set the new panorama location, and flick the switch back from P to F. If you're using a Phantom 3 or Inspire, if you're using a Phantom 4, you need to flick it back to P. And then press Start Capture in the upper left-hand corner. The other way to do this is to disengage the aircraft in the bottom center of the screen, fly the aircraft to the location, and set the new panorama location and re-engage. Let me show you how to easily change the new panorama location. You can either click on the set aircraft location in the lower left of the screen, or if you've left the default settings alone, you can actually press the C2 button, the right button on your transmitter, and it will pop up and ask you if you want to set the panorama at that new location. Now I'm going to switch the panorama profile from a 360 spherical to a vertical pano. So I'm going to tap on profile and switch to vertical. Now, with a panorama that's not full 360, I need to tell Autopilot what direction I want to face to do the panorama. Since I'm already facing in the direction I want to do the panorama, I'm going to tap on Use Gimbal Position, and then tap on Horizontal Center. You can see that the Horizontal Center slider has shifted to 151 degrees. I'm now ready to do my second panorama. I'm going to tap on Start and Gauge Sequence, Checklist complete. I'm going to use previous altitude reference, hit continue, and it's going to count down, and it will do that five shot vertical pano from this location in the direction that it is now facing. Now that this is done, let's do a 180 pano at a different location. I'm going to disengage and I'm going to go fly to this other location. And once I'm at my new location, I'm going to tap on Profile and switch it to 180 degree horizontal. I'm then going to tap on Use Gimbal Position and say Horizontal Center, since I'm facing the direction that I want the 180 to be done. I now need to move the Pano Mark location. I can do this by tapping on Use Aircraft Location or pressing the C2 button on my transmitter. I'm then going to tap on Pano Mark. Again, now I'm ready to go. I'm going to start the engage sequence, say checklist complete, tap on use previous altitude reference, hit continue, it will count down and engage this new uh, horizontal pano, taking four pictures that can be stitched together in one large horizontal picture. In my final example, I'm going to do a waypoint mission with three waypoints and three waypoint actions. So I'm going to select waypoints instead of pano. In the interest of doing this step by step, I'm going to show you that I'm going to go for lost connection, I'm going to do end mission so it doesn't use LCMC. For mission type, I'm going to keep it on patrol. And I'll keep the patrol count to one. And then for mission completion, I'm going to change it from hover to return to home. I'm going to keep the default altitude at 152 feet and the default preferred speed at 8.1 miles per hour. I'm now going to click on the map in the bottom center of the screen to bring up the full screen map. I'm going to scroll out a little bit and find the place where I want to put my first waypoint. I'm now going to tap and hold where I want my first waypoint to be. Now I'm going to tap and hold where I want my second waypoint to be. I'm going to select new waypoint at end and create just a two-point waypoint mission. I'm now going to tap and hold one more time to create a third waypoint and click uh, tap new waypoint at end. I'm now going to tap on waypoint one and then tap on the box to bring up the settings for waypoint one. I'm now going to tap on waypoint action and select pano. Now I see the other options available for me for my pano. I'm going to select on profile and change it to a spherical 360. For this first pano, I'm going to change the photo mode from single to AEB. Although it's probably overkill, I'm going to turn on exposure bands and create two exposure bands and then just use the default settings. I'll now scroll down and tap on frame so that I can see what I've set up for this pano, 37 images. 
Our first waypoint panel should be set up, so let's go to waypoint number two, tap on that, tap on its box, bring up its settings, click on waypoint actions, and again click on pano. For this pano, I'm going to use a vertical profile. I'm going to scroll up and manually set the horizontal center of where I want the, uh, the vertical pano to face. Just for grins, I'm going to use three exposure bands and use the default settings there. I'm now going to tap on Next in the lower right-hand corner, which will bring up the third waypoint settings. Again, go to Waypoint Action, change it from None to Pano, and I'll change the profile for this one to a spherical 360 as well. At this point, my waypoint mission with the three panoramas are actually all set up and I could take off. Just to demonstrate mixing panoramas in video, I'm going to add a camera trigger after waypoint one and turn on video so that it records video between waypoint number one and waypoint number two. And then I'm going to do it again. I'll create another camera trigger after waypoint two, again to turn on video so that it records video between waypoint number two and waypoint number three. Let me quickly adjust the focus trigger so I know where the cameras are going to look when it reaches those points. And this mission should be all ready to go. I'm going to go back, click on the flight dashboard, and prepare to engage. One last check of the settings. I'm going to turn the quadcopter on. I'm going to hide inline control so I get a full screen map of what I'm looking at. And now I'm going to take off, and again, I like to engage from the air. So I'll switch back to the camera view, and I'm going to take off and get over the water a little bit. I'm going to check the map one last time, start the engage sequence, checklist complete, fixed operator, and again do takeoff location. Yes, about 104 feet. Hit continue, continue, and now it will count down, and my waypoint mission will engage. And you can see the quadcopter now will fly to that initial waypoint. Once it gets to that first waypoint, it will start taking the pictures for my initial pano, and I'm going to speed this up a great deal. In the interest of time here, I'm going to jump forward to the completion of that pano, and then I'm going to show you that it turned on video via the camera action that I set up, and it immediately started recording, uh, pointing at that focus trigger point that I created in front of the building that I'm standing and now it's making its way over to waypoint number two. Once it gets to waypoint number two, you'll see that it immediately clicks in and starts doing that vertical pano that I set up. Once it completes that vertical panorama, it turns video back on and starts recording uh, while focused on that focus trigger point that I set up. I'm gonna greatly accelerate this so you can see it fly between waypoint number two and waypoint number three. Then to complete up my mission, it's going to do that spherical pano at waypoint number three. And I'm going to speed this up about 2,000%. With the waypoint mission complete, autopilot's going to disengage. And based upon my settings, it is going to uh, return to home. I hope you found this video valuable. I hope you enjoy creating panos. A final note, if you want to know how to stitch the images, you want to use one of the various pano stitching programs out there, such as Pano Weaver, PT GUI, Auto Pano Giga. These programs are all extremely powerful and can offer a variety of features and options. Find the solution that works best for you and start posting them out to uh, the various sites that host panoramas. I hope you enjoy the feature, and we'll see you in the next video.